Hi and welcome everybody. My name is Matthias Hinz. I'm a PhD candidate from the University of Magdeburg in Germany and uh, I would like to present to you the Anticipate project Assessing Anticipation and Decision Making in Team Handball. The theoretical background of the Anticipate project is expertise research in anticipation and decision making. So far we know that anticipation and decision making skills are expertise related. However, the research that was conducted on that was often without the consideration of motor components within the experiments, which leaves question marks about the ecological validity of the experimental representation. So the Anticipate project used an embodied cognition approach for considerations of the interactions between perception, cognition and action in decision making. So the main aim of Anticipate was the design and evaluation of a cognitive motor test to assess anticipation and decision making in team handball. The first study in the project was about the test design and the reliability analysis of the test. In a first step, we created a video scenario that consisted of four attack actions showing a right-hander uh, executing uh, four different attack actions, as you can see here, a breakthrough, a jump throw, a pass, and a standing throw. These four attack actions were occluded at different time points with a time interval of 200 milliseconds. So the video sequences with the fused information was at T6 and the video sequences with full information was at T0. We also included ambiguous attack actions for the avoidance of expectation effects in the participants later in the experiments. We doubled all of these video clips for reliability analysis and we also mirrored these video clips to get a left-hander version. So the main experiments um, consisted of 224 video sequences and our analysis used only 112 video sequences. The test scenario was presented on a life-size projection screen in front of a contact plate system that was prepared with Team Handball specific uh, marks with a 6 meter line, 7 meter line and 9 meter line fully representing uh, Team Handball specific dimensions. 66 Team Handball players were uh, participating in our study. Uh, we had two test sessions for our intra and intercession reliability analysis. And each participant was required to execute a motor response to the attack actions uh, that were shown in the video presentations. Important was that the motor response should be executed after the end of a video presentation. The participants uh, had to choose from four uh, different choices of a motor response. They could use a forward tackling response. They could also use a sideways left or sideways right response. And they could also use a passive or blocking response. The variables that were measured were the choices of motor response participants made as well as the initialization times of the motor response. Initialization time of motor response was measured as the time when a participant left his starting position. In other words, when he left the central contact plate. The reliability analysis uh, showed moderate intra and intercession reliability uh, properties of the test we designed. As an example, you can see here that with increasing visual information here from T3 to occlusion T0, the level of agreement of the choices of motor responses 
increased as well. So in other words, more participants gave the same answer in the double video presentation. The initialization time, the multiple responses, showed the fastest uh, initialization time of the motor responses at T0 with full information in the videos and the slowest initialization times of the motor responses were seen at T6 with the fewest information in the video clips. Based on reliable psychometric properties from study one, we conducted um, a validity analysis in a second study in the Anticipate project. For that, we used the same test setup with four choices of motor responses. We measured um, choices of motor response and um, the initialization times of the motor responses. And we compared uh, elite and amateur players on decision-making behavior with their response frequencies. So as an example, you can see here a left-handed jump throw. And you can clearly see that there is a distinct decision-making behavior in forward tackling between elite and amateur players. So in detail, you see at occlusion T4 that elite players preferred a forward tackling response in about 80% of the cases, where at amateur players only preferred forward tackling in about 40% of the cases in T4. So there was a significant difference in forward tackling between both groups at T4. And we also found significant differences in the left-hander breakthrough for forward tackling and pass, and also in the left-hander breakthrough for passive and blocking response. Initialization time decreased again with increasing visual information. However, the results did not reveal any expertise effect on decision time. So to summarize the evidence from study one and study two, first of all, we saw reliable decisions in our complex and embodied decision-making test environment, which was satisfying um, for the test design itself. The expertise effect in the embodied decision-making behavior in study two confirms recent uh, research in team handball for example, the Mania, Guanyu and Hosna study, who also demonstrated distinct anticipation behavior in a virtual environment with occluded video sequences in the defense. That there was no expertise effect of decision time in our study is in contrast to faster and better decisions of expert team handball players in the uh, team handball studies of Markus Raab from the German sports universities. However, the comparability of findings is to be seen with um, caution because his studies investigated decision-making and option generation behavior from the attacker perspective with verbal reports, whereas we used the defender um, the defender view with embodied responses. We also assume that embodied decision time within decision-making behavior uh, seem to underlie sensory motor interactions. In simple words, we assume that the distinct decision-making behavior in study two um, is based on corrective interactions of town top-down and bottom-up um, interactions. So that means better players seem to invest additional time to readjust the first intuitive decision that came to their mind within a decision-making scenario in order to decide for a different 
or a better decision that could explain the non-existing expertise effect of decision time in our study. So should um, apply holistic test settings in anticipation and decision-making experiments, for example, with embodied approaches, with the involvement of context priors, with the considerations of handedness effects, especially for team handball studies. In decision-making, decision time could play a more crucial role as previously assumed in the literature. So this is really um, of high interest uh, within embodied decision-making uh, research. And of course, simple heuristics or motor heuristic studies in team sports should also apply uh, embodied cognition uh, setups. So I hope my explanations were more or less clear to all of you guys. If not, I'm ready for your questions now or later, whenever you want, you can contact me. But so far, thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice day and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.